Today we're going to work on a Bally 6000. It has the 88FF displayed for an error. It has a dead battery. So we're going to replace the battery and then we're going to use the RAM clear chips. And then I'll go through all of the settings on it. This particular machine is going to be set up for a coinless setup. It'll only take dollar bills. And I don't want to use a ticket printer. There is no hopper, so we're going to use hand pay. So when you press cash out, it'll go into hand pay. You turn the key on the side, the credits are gone, and you start all over. So we'll take the board out. First things first, shut your power off. Leave it plugged in. I like it plugged in. It keeps the ground on the machine so you don't have static problems. There's two handles on the front. Use your thumbs to push off, pull the board out. There's the dead battery. And you can take note of battery orientation. There is a little plus symbol to indicate where the new battery needs to go once you take this one out. All right, so now we're gonna cut this battery out and we're gonna leave the legs still standing up on the board. I know if you have the equipment to desolder it, that's great, but we're gonna cut these off so people, even with a soldering, a little soldering iron, uh, will have an easy way of being able to take the battery out and solder back in the new one. With the new battery and we're gonna form the leads on it so they have about the same spacing as the old battery that we took out. You just use a needle nose pliers and then you can bend the lead down and do the same thing on the negative end. All right, so now we got the leads bent. They're just a little bit long, so we're gonna trim them off. So they're sticking down maybe a quarter of an inch beyond the battery. All right, and now we're gonna get ready to solder the battery in. We're gonna put soldering paste on the battery. It's not mandatory, I like to use it. It sure does help the solder flow nicely. So now we're gonna get some soldering paste flux on the battery. There. Even though there's flux in the solder, I like to add a little bit extra. It just makes things a little smoother. Again, check your, your polarity. Make sure you're getting the plus on the plus and the minus on the minus. And we're soldering on to the, uh, the existing post that we left off of the old battery. It's gonna make a good solid connection. That's great, so now the next step we're going now we're gonna do the RAM clear. This is a chip lifter. It's a really handy tool. This is the one that I happen to use. I like it. They're pretty inexpensive. I bought this one on the internet. I don't know, I think it was like seven bucks. One of the better $7 I've spent. You're also gonna need a set of clear chips. And then I have mine mounted in a socket. Uh, it, they're a little more rigid than just the legs on the EEPROM. You'll also notice there's a notch 
on one end and not the other. Every one of these has a notch on one end. That's for the pin orientation. You wanna take note of that, really important. Pay attention to that on your board. All of the chips on your board have a notch on one end. You, you do not want to make the mistake of putting the chip pin upside down. It fits upside down and it will burn your chip up. So pay attention to that when you're working on these. Easy mistake to make. Also on these chips, make sure that you can clearly see the markings, like this one is U43. Make sure you can see the ears say U43 and U28. If it doesn't have markings on it, mark them now so you don't have any problems down the road. This has both, it has a Sharpie marking on it as well. But mark them so when it's time to put them back in, there's no confusion. So you just lift them out. Don't get underneath the socket either. Make sure you go between the socket and the chip when you're lifting. Now we come in with our clear chips. Again, chip orientation. Pay attention to that. Take your time lining up those pins. It's much easier to take your time and get them in right. You don't want to bend the pins over. It's easy to get in a hurry and make mistakes. All right, clear chips are in. Now we're gonna put them in the machine. in make sure it's fully seated and then you're gonna hold in two buttons the test button and the pseudo coin button hold them in at the same time turn the machine on copyright Valley gaming incorporated all now right you watch on the front and on the display it says CHC and clear and now I'm gonna let go with my fingers perfect now the machine is cleared and we can put the original chips back in it. Shut the power off. And now we'll put the original software back in. Okay, U43, got my notch to the top. You have to line up every single little leg. Work it down in there. Don't force them. Uh, they'll bend and it will look like it's in. It'll look and it won't work right, but it'll look good. The next thing I'll talk about is we're not going to change anything on this machine, but if you were starting from scratch or you wanted to change something, um, if you want to change it from a nickel to a quarter or something like that, you would do that 
with the dip switches. This is DS1, DS2, DS3. And in the settings, they talk about on and off, and that's changed by sliding the dip switch. This is the off position, so there's number one. This is DS2, position one. And these are the settings for changing things. So DS1, all the dip switches should be in the on position. DS2, depending on what your machine is, if it's a nickel, here's your settings. Quarter, here's your settings. Dollar. And then some other things, um, switch five on is if you have a JCM WBA bill acceptor. And this is what a JCM WBA looks like. All right. Seven for real spin. Uh, most of them are going to be on for normal. The machines that will have this set to off are machines that are frenzy machines where the reels will go crazy and spin different directions. So... On the frenzy machines, this would be seven off. And eight, it depends on if your machine is a coin machine or not. This one is coinless. It doesn't have a, a diverter in it. All that stuff is removed from it. So switch, dip switch three, position eight will be on. There is no diverter optic present. And then also on the front of the MPU board, there's a little toggle switch. Uh, make sure that is in the up position. All right. Put the board all the way back in. And when I mentioned make sure this switch is in the up position, this is if you do not have a coin mechanism. There's no coin comparator. It's a coinless machine that needs to be up. If you have coins and a hopper, that needs to be down. But for this machine... It needs to be in the up position. So now we're going to go through uh, the setup and the settings on it. We're going to turn the power back on. Copyright Alley Gaming Incorporated. All rights reserved. And if everything is right, all of the the beginning and end of the reel strips will line up. You'll see the seam on every single reel. So you can see, and they're all in a line. So everything looks good in that respect. Now is when it's asking for the time and the date. It's not really important. Uh, when it was in the casino, fine, but for home use, not a big deal. We can bypass that. You just hit the change button. And now it's going to display our errors, which are fine because the rest of our settings aren't finished yet. So now we're going to open the machine up and we're going to get into settings. And we're going to press the test button 11 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm not going to go through every single setting on the machine. I'm just going to go through what it takes to get the machine running as a coinless machine. So this is my cheat sheet that I use. And we're going to step through all the settings until we get, we're going to stop at 47. I don't want to track noises when the machine is just sitting quietly in the game room. Uh, so I want that off. And so... I've labeled the buttons. It's a little bit confusing without labels. I recommend you do that. So we're gonna step from 27, we're gonna keep going next until we get to 47, and we're gonna set that to all zeros. So I've got one, and I wanna, I wanna use the minus. All zeros, perfect. The next one I'm gonna go for is 56. I want that to all zeros. And 
And I'm just holding it and then let off early because it keeps going. 8,000 and then it goes to all zeros. The next one I'm going to go for is 51. I want 51 at all nines. And that's easy. I'm just going to go minus one time. Next one I'm going to go for is 58. I want that at all nines. So I'm going to go plot. No, excuse me. I'm going to go minus. Next one I want to go for is 73. And I want that all zeros. one. Now I want that one to go up. I want to stop that at two, so I'm going to hit the spin button. Now I'm going to go for 81. I want that to be all zeros. I don't have a coin acceptor, so I need that at all zeros. Next one is going to be 68. Um, this one, this particular machine does have pro sound in it. So we're going to set that to one. All right, perfect. And then go, go cycle all the way through it again. Verify all these settings. Sometimes when you're changing one inadvertently, it also will change another one. So go back and review them all, make sure they're right. I'm going to go all the way back to 47. All zeros, 51, all nines, 58, all nines, 73 is all zeros, 61 is 2, 81 is all zeros, Sixty-eight is a one for the pro sound. All right, now we can shut the front door. Push the reset button. Close the door. Bill acceptor's lit up, it's ready to play. Time to give it a try. Well, let's put some money in it. like in Vegas.